We've got most of it machined up. Welcome to part two of the DIY Tiny G Linear Rail Ball Screw CNC Machine. We're gonna do four things in this video. First thing, we're gonna talk about some lessons that we've already learned that are really uh, important or going to impact the future videos on this project. Two, we're gonna sort of do some light assembly and start putting it together and looking at the mechanisms and how they work more closely. We're gonna look at the pneumatics. My intent for this is to be a pneumatic engraving machine. So we're gonna use a pneumatic pen that'll engrave metal, kind of sounds like a bzzz as it goes around. And we're gonna use pneumatic uh, cylinders with a solenoid to lower and raise it in the Z axis. And then we're gonna take a quick look um, at the controller and some preliminary motion stuff. Lessons learned. First off, really appreciate all the comments in the first video on this series. I've already learned a lot and it's, it's giving me a little bit of a pause because there's been some really good feedback and I don't want to tell you guys just go read the comments because there's honestly too many and I think it's my job as the content creator or the host of this to, to do that work for you. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we've run into some other problems on this machine that I think mean I, I need to spend some time um, flushing them out. So I'm gonna go through all those comments and try to distill those down into what's the most important. Because here's the thing, I want you guys to be able to take what the decisions that I make to make this the best project for you. I don't want you to have to go through all this arduous work. <laughs> kind of reminds me of building computers in like the early 90s when it was a much more uh, the wild, wild west. It was less cookie cutter. Um, and cookie cutter is bad, but it's also good. And I think I'm looking forward to the next five to 10 years where there's more standardization and information out there. But you know, even Tiny G and Garble, God bless them, great boards, but there's still way too many settings and power supplies and steppers and acceleration and you have stalling motors, and you don't know why or why can't you go faster. I want this thing to be an awesome machine and I wanna kinda of hand that to you guys with a very, very clear cut example of how to do it. And then you can decide what you want to tweak. But it all goes back to my philosophy, which I talk about in how I quote CNC work and sort of try to how I do most of the things in my life, which is don't do something unless you can put your best foot forward. And I thought I had that on this machine. What I'm now realizing is, hey, I owe it to you guys to do a little bit more homework. Um, again, I don't think there's any mistakes, but so many good information about linear rails and ball screws and how to grease them and how to align them. And it got me excited to make sure I put forward the best product. I also, unfortunately, um, have fried the Tiny G. Uh, I don't know what happened. It had been working for um, a couple of days. And actually, I took this iPhone video and the Y axis was moving great. That's what I wanted. I wanted that rapid back and forth. And it looks awesome. It's precision, it's acceleration and deceleration. It looks natural and it's fast and it's awesome. It gets you excited. Let's look at some of the parts that we machined on the Tormach. Let's put this thing together and then we'll take a look at the pneumatics. So you saw in part one, we've got the linear trucks or bearings on the linear rails. They are still awesome, folks. I love it. <laughs> Be careful you don't run them off because the balls come out of these things, pain in the butt. Um, but I'm happy with those. And again, one of the things that people were really criticized in the first video, which I can take, is you know, you're adding unnecessary risk with this angled piece on the alignment and um, you're exposing the rails to debris, which is gonna create a problem if you get debris inside the ball. So again, more to come to that in the next video. Let's flip her up though and you'll see it's actually a pretty heavy machine, which is nothing wrong with that. And I love these 246 blocks, by the way. They're, everyone has 123s, but I feel like it's not as common to have the 246s. Here's that beautiful ball screw. I love this thing. And you can see when we rotate it, um, we get motion like so. So actually, let's um, go ahead. I'm going to balance this thing here. For, give me a second. And then we're going to actually run it, uh, the, turn the machine on and power it so we can see this angle here. Okay, so again, the linear rails will fasten into this crossbar here, which has the ball nut and the ball screw. So I'm in Chili Pepper. If I just type in G0, which is a rapid feed rate, um, X100 for 100 millimeters and hit enter, boom. Like so. G0, X0 goes back to zero. And let's take a look at that up close. I think it looks really cool to see the rotating motion of that ball screw. Ugh. 
Okay, now let's fasten the two ra linear rail blocks and those machined aluminum brackets to the x-axis crossbar. Okay, now same thing, G0, X100. And you see we've got motion on the whole system, if you will, for the x-axis. So that's how we cook up and move and control the x-axis. That makes sense, everybody? Yeah, that's how the ball screw integrates with the linear rails. So the plan is to use this little pen that we showed, which when you hook up air to it and then slide this, vi oop, vibrates like crazy and you can write on it. Like so. Now we're going to take the y-axis, again, this is a part that we sort of pre-purchased, pre-made off of eBay, and we're going to attach it to those two vertical mounts on the linear rails. So check it out. All we did was machine this little aluminum angle bracket, and it holds two uh, Bimba pneumatic so, uh, cylinders, and then there's a base plate that they mount to. That's going to travel up and down, and the pen will mount inside of here. This hole here is just a clearance hole. So let's hook it up to the solenoid and see how she works. So this is what they call a five-way pneumatic solenoid. Looks like a lot going on here. It's actually really simple. You have an input line from your air compressor, and then we have two outputs. I've teed those to split them because we've got two uh, pneumatic cylinders we want to control at the same time. I have them labeled compression and expansion. Let's hook them up. So I'll take the expansion lines, and that's when you want the cylinder to expand. So those just go in the top two, quite simple. And the compression is for the retract, which is, and it's simple. The, they compress by blowing air in here, which pushes the cylinders down. By pushing air in through this port, it's going to push the um, internal mechanism back up. And to expand, it pushes air down the top, which goes back down. They're that simple. These are called two-way pneumatic cylinders. You can buy one-way or a spring return where it only pushes to expand, for example, and it retracts not with an air pressure, but with a spring. Frankly, either one would, would work for here. Now, I've got a rag in line with a quick disconnect so that we can actually turn down the pressure so you can see um, how that affects it. And these pneumatic solenoids are great because they have 12 volt signal that's really easy to control with an Arduino or hopefully a Tiny G. I haven't actually figured that part out yet. Um, well, I figured it out, but I don't know how to control it with the G-code, but we'll go back to that. Um, or you can use this blue override. So let's hook up our air, and we'll push the button. <laughs> how cool is that, folks? Now I'll turn the air down, and you can see it's much slower. And I can turn the air up, and it gets pretty violent. They're very responsive. I, I could play with these things all day long. Sweet. So next up, next episode, Tiny G. I ordered a new board. I got to nail down the settings. I was happy with how the Y was moving. I want to make sure I can get the X as rapid as I can. And I want to give you guys a starting point of the exact recipe for NEMA 23s with Tiny G. There's all these acceleration, max speed, um, it's not complicated, but I, I want to have a recipe for folks so you don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. I saw a machine in Maker Faire last year that was Tiny G driven that was cooking back and forth. It was awesome. That's what I want to get. Then we need to fine tune the pneumatics and the engraver. And I can't figure out, it's been bothering me ever. I overthought this, but I need the Z axis to lift up and down. Uh, on a pneumatic system, which is normally a Z-driven thing. So I'm actually not sure how I'm going to figure this out in regular G-code because it's not a spindle on, spindle off. So I've got a little bit of a problem ahead of me to figure that out. We'll see what we come up with. Otherwise, folks, take care. Appreciate the comments, the likes, the thumbs up, and the shares. See you next week.